Back in November, I published an early stage review of this Lumo radio frequency device, which promises to tighten skin. Then in January, I shared some initial results that I'd noticed after using it weekly for a couple of months, where I felt I'd experienced a lift and slight increase in volume around my jowl area in particular. Now, six months into using a radio frequency device, I'm back with an update on how my results are holding up, how often you need to keep using radio frequency at home to maintain results, and to share my experience on how to use it safely. Now, though I've been using the Lumo device, which does have additional functionality, including red and blue light and microcurrent, there are other at-home radio frequency devices on the market, which, although not exactly the same, will use similar technology. And among the top selling radio frequency devices is the Tripolar Stop, which claims results can be seen immediately. And it heats the skin to 38 degrees Celsius, which the makers say is the lowest temperature it can use to be effective with the aim of delivering results without overheating the deeper layer of our skin. At the time of filming, it starts from around £300 on Amazon UK and $340 on Amazon US. And I'll include links to the Tripolar Stop and a couple of other higher rated RF devices, along with the Lumo in the description below. Now, radio frequency treatments send energy waves to heat the deeper layer of skin called the dermis, to stimulate our cells to produce more collagen, which is what helps give our skin its firmness and volume. And because we produce less of it as we get older, we definitely need to give it a bit of a boost from time to time if we want to maintain volume in our skin. And in clinics, you'd be looking at treatments like Morpheus and Thermage, which can heat the dermis up to around 75 degrees Celsius or 167 degrees Fahrenheit. And as I discussed with leading cosmetic surgeon, Dr. Richard Westrick in this video, you want to be in safe experience hands undergoing treatments like that. For instance, he doesn't use it above the cheekbones to avoid the risk of fat melting, which isn't the loveliest thought. Now, at home devices are not delivering the same kind of intensity. So the risk of fat loss is smaller, but it does exist. And so you need to use the devices carefully. Now, no one can give you guarantees because the technology is fairly new and we don't have enough independent research and evidence to go on. So I've been using the Lumo now for about six months and I haven't noticed fat loss, but I have been careful. And it initially heats the skin up to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius for up to 20 seconds. And then it cools slightly to avoid overheating. It's priced at around 400 pounds in the UK and $530 in the US. And particularly when I first started using it on a weekly basis, that's when I noticed the increase in volume and skin tightening around the jowls, which is exactly the result it's intended to produce. But how do I use it safely now to maintain my results on a longer term basis while minimizing the chance of fat loss? Well, I'm going to show you my routine now with the disclaimer that this is what works for me, but we're all different. So this is just common sense advice because at the moment there's no hard and fast scientific or medical guidance. Now, initially, the makers Even Skin recommend using the device weekly, and they say you should see a difference after a few uses. But remember to take before pictures so you can compare the then and now to see if you've got a result. From that point, it's left up to the user the frequency at which you use it. So I've settled for about twice a month. Um, and so really, I'm in maintenance mode at the moment. What I do now when I use it, and I've got it in radio frequency only mode at the moment is I linger on each area of skin just for long enough to feel the heat starting to come through, but not to burn the skin. And so when I feel it starting to nip, that's when I move on to the next area. And like I said before, the device does include that functionality that's supposed to prevent overheating on any areas. But as soon as I feel the heat intensity coming through, I move on and then I'll cover an entire area and then I'll usually go back. So I'm doing two passes over each area. 
So in the RF only mode that I'm using at the moment, I use it on around level four out of five levels on the fattier areas of my face. And then I take it down to about level two out of five for the outer eye area and my forehead. I'm not gonna use it around my eye area at all or sort of over the eyes because that's where you've got really delicate skin and um, a device like this is just gonna be too powerful to use on your eyelids or just under the eye. And so in total, I'm probably spending around 10 to 12 minutes per session treating my face, certainly no more than half an hour a month in total. And you can also use it to treat the um, neck and chest area, although at the moment I'm tend to, tending to focus on my face, uh, my upper neck and chin. Um, I mentioned before that this has a microcurrent mode and also an electric gradient mode. You can, you can check out those in full in my previous videos. But they are both very intense and they can be uncomfortable if you use a water-based conductive gel or even just a water-based hyaluronic acid serum. So with a device like this, you shouldn't be using oil-based um, serums with it. You know, and, and sometimes I'm just using it on clean, freshly washed skin and I might add in a bit of hyaluronic acid serum. If I want to really amplify the treatment, I'll use a new face conductive gel and it means the electrical stimulation actually makes my muscles spasm it so strong, but it does make a visible difference. There's no doubt about it. So for a gentler treatment, I just go with the radio frequency only mode, which is the primary anti-aging technology this device has to offer. And I'm usually just using that on um, my clean face or just with a little bit of hyaluronic acid serum. So that's how I'm using radio frequency at home long-term and provided you're not going over the recommended maximum durations of treatment for the device and you're not lingering too long on any areas, which would be hard to do because it would start to feel really hot on your skin. You should be able to get the pros of these devices without the cons. Now, if you're looking to buy an RF device, I would definitely pick one of the better sellers that have been reviewed, tried and tested by a number of people so um, you know exactly what you're getting. Who doesn't love before and after shots? So here's a shot of me in November, compared with me after two months of using the device weekly. And now, Four months from that point, here's me today after cutting back on the treatment frequency and just going into maintenance mode where I'm using an RF device around twice a month. And what I would say is that for anyone with more advanced signs of aging, who's maybe coming to this later and you might have deeper lines and more obvious sagging, that's where I would recommend you go to a clinic first and try something more powerful initially like the Morpheus treatment, which can offer dramatic skin tightening results. Then after that, you could try to maintain the results with an at-home device. And although the home products are pricey, they're nothing compared to the cost of in-clinic treatments. So they should save us long-term. Now, I hope that answers any questions you might have around using RF at home. If not, just ask in the comments section and I'll do my very best to find an answer for you. As always, I love to hear your experiences. So let me know how you're getting on with radio frequency or other skincare devices at home. And if you want to watch more videos like this one from me, then just hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it to be notified about my upcoming videos. Next time, I'm gonna be sharing pictures of me from four years ago, age 45, and telling you why I think I look a little younger, age 49, and how I've gone about doing that. Though I will let you be the judge of whether I actually look younger. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.